Hi and welcome to Music and Gear. We've got a box from Tolman. And this is part of a series that we're going to start working on on Telecasters. Uh, Budget-friendly Telecasters. This particular one came from the USA Tolman stock. So it got here in less than four days. So let's open up the box and see which one we ordered. The box did come in really, really good shape. There's no damage to the box, no tears, no rips, and it's well taped on the exterior. staples and tape. And it looks like we have a box in a box. So we have packaging. Our inside box was taped, but it looks like the tape has failed. And this cardboard seems rather thin, this piece of corrugated. It is a dual ply corrugation cardboard, but it is, it is much lighter than what we've been seeing on some of our other budget friendly guitars. So here we have goodie bag, got some tools and the standard Radio Shack cord. So we got some loose styrofoam just kind of sitting on top of the guitar. And the little moisture bags. And the neck brace is broken. And the guitar is wrapped in this bubble wrap. Which I don't, I don't know which would be better, the bubble wrap or the, the other material that we've been seeing on the guitars. I'm kind of thinking this would be better. I think that this would have more protection. And we've got a little piece of foam on the switch. That's uh, really pretty. Arlie Benton. Okay, you know the routine. We're going to go through every aspect of this guitar, especially since it's our first Harley Benton. First impressions, it's pretty. The guitar itself is a very traditional tele body. There, there is no arm carve right here. It is completely flat. And there is no tummy carve on the back. It's a completely flat back as well. They have eased the guitar around this edge. And I'm going to guess that this is about a 3 8 inch round over. It's very nice. And feeling the round over, I don't feel any skips from the router. It's nice and smooth. The side 
of the guitar is also nice and smooth so I do not feel any step downs from the machine. The top of the guitar looking at the light, looking at the flatness of the top and the finish, I don't see any spots that would indicate a glue line. I'm sure it is a multi-piece body but sometimes you can see that in the finish. So this one's nicely done on the top. On the back, I do see a slight spot going sideways right here. It's not a crack in the finish. I see it in the light. So something going on right there. Just looking at it this way, you don't see it. The only time you see it is when the direct light shines in that spot. This edge has the exact same round over as the top. And again, I do not feel any missteps in the routing. It's nice and smooth. Right here where it hits the plate for the neck, it transitions to a tighter round over. And that tighter, tighter round over goes to right here. So it's just where the neck plate is. And it's a nice transition. It's not really abrupt. They've, they've eased it in to the smaller radius rather well. The neck plate is following the body. It's not set askew to the guitar. The screws feel nice and flush. There's no issues there. And the back plate is just plain. Doesn't say Harley Benton, no serial number. It's just a basic chrome plate. We do have six furls right here. And this will be the first guitar that I feel all the furls are exactly the same. They're either pressed in by a machine and it's detecting the distance or there's a lip on the furl and they're driving it down to the lip. Either way, the furls are all exactly the same. That's nicely done. On the top of the guitar we have a pick guard and the pick guard is a three ply. It's white, black, white and they put a plastic protection piece on it which we have not peeled off yet. And it's setting flat and true to the body. It's not bouncing. There's no gaps. To the neck, how it's cut in and around, it's a nice tight fit. The way it follows the body, it follows the body very well. The offset from the pick guard to the edge of the body is consistent. Sometimes you'll see where the pick guard kind of goes like this and then the round, you know, the body doesn't quite follow the same. This one does. So that's, that's nice. The electronics plate here is chrome and again they put that plastic protection covering over it to protect it in shipping. I don't feel any strange edges there. The screws are setting down tight to the plate and the plate is not moving. Our volume knobs have a nice gnarling. 
We feel good. Our turn knob, the way it turns, there is a little scratchiness right here. I'm going to say the tone knob is just barely hitting that plate. Because from here to here, it drags a little bit. Yep, I see it. As I turn it, I see the, the gap here is changing. So that could be one or two things. This knob is a little crooked on the shaft when it was put on. Or the shaft has a bend to it. But it is definitely hitting the plate right there just a little bit. Our volume knob feels very smooth. It's not friction free but it is it's on the free side this will this guitar would be very easy to reach down and control with your pinky I believe it has enough firmness to where it's not going to move around but yet it, it moves easily when I do this with my pinky I would say this would be between a standard and a friction free it's it moves rather well our switch it has a nice snap in every position and it's a nice positive stop it does have some side to side play But it has a nice it has a nice snap to it. But it does have some jiggle. The screws for the switch are also set down even and tight to the plate. So there's nothing setting up. Our ashtray bridge. Now sometimes these guys will have sharp corners. It feels nice to my fingers. I don't feel anything sharp. Now these screws going into the saddles, the four in the center are pretty much flush with the top of the saddle. I don't feel those at all. The ones on the very end, on your low E and high E, are sticking out of the saddle. And they do have a little bit of a sharpness to them. So again, you can get shorter screws and you can swap out these screws to shorter ones and get that top of that screw down below the saddle so you don't feel it. And these do not appear, they do not appear to be compensated saddles. So these look like standard saddles. So I have to check the intonation and see how the intonation looks on the guitar. But these, these are not compensated saddles. Our pickup is nice and firm. There's no movement. It's setting true and square. It's nice. Our top pickup, again, very firm. No playroom. And it's setting true and square in the body. And again, this upper pickup has a piece of plastic on it to protect the chrome. Now let's look at our neck pocket. It's very tight. This is a nice neck pocket. There's a little bit of an easing right here where it rounds over to go square to the back. There's no chipping, no tear out. And again, the exact same easing here. 
and no chipping, no tear out. And this goes to a very nice sharp point. That's hard to do. And the transition here is very small where it transitions and goes even to the neck. It's actually very nice. And the body to neck is flush. I don't see any strange gap from front to back where the neck is attached to the guitar. So if there is a shim in here, it's going to be very small. It looks like it's setting directly on the body. No gap. Our neck appears to be three pieces. We have our top maple fingerboard and then our caramel rear maple and then our skunk stripe where they put the truss rod in. It looks a little dark to be ebony so I'm not sure what wood that is but it's almost black. I like the transition and you do not feel it. It's been sanded and cleaned up very nicely. The neck is very smooth and this is a satin finish so this is not a high gloss finish. We do have a sharp edge right here where it goes to our seat cut and a little bit of space here where they didn't bring this all the way back. It has a, it has a large seat. But the transition is nicely done. Up here, where it goes to the headstock, I was feeling that. That, that felt really good. That has a, a nice easing right here into the headstock. Everything feels nice and smooth. And I do feel the logo. So it is protruding from the finish a little bit. Our nut to the side is flush. The bottom is spot on. The top, there is a little bit of, just a little bit where it's a little short, but it's very, very little. Most would call that smooth. But there is a slight feeling where the nut isn't quite out to the end of the neck. We have two standard string trees. And then Crusan tuners. And when we tune the instrument, I'll report back and let you know how these feel. But the finish on them looks nice. It's a smaller tuning key than what I'm used to. I guess it would be considered very traditional, but it's a nice finish. Our frets are standard frets. The frets go all the way out to the edge of the fingerboard, but it does look like they've put more of a chamfer on. It looks like it's more than 30 degrees. It could be 35. It definitely looks like they put more chamfer on it. And they have dressed the end of the frets very well. There are no short frets. The fret feel
I would say this is about as good as you can get a fret without polishing it. They have done some work, but I don't think they've been polished. They're not scratchy. I, I would say these frets are still hitting well above the $220 price point. These frets are just as good as uh, an Epiphone or a Kramer or any uh, Squire Vintage Vibe or Player Series Fender. They're, they're just as good as that. It would be very easy to bring these frets up to a polishing and make them glass smooth. Frets feel nice. And we have black inlays on the front of the guitar. And we do have placement dots on the top of the neck. Right through there. All in all, the fit and finish is really good. I don't see any issues. Just that one small spot on the back of the guitar. And that's it. It looks to be well constructed. Okay. Let's see what kind of relief came from the factory. 25.5 is what I'm guessing. This guitar does have some relief. I'm going to say that it has about a millimeter, maybe a little more, 1.1. 1.2 millimeters of relief. Here's our Stumac action gauge. So we are going to check it on the 12th. And our low E is set I can see the black line under the string at 0.080. Our high E I'm going to say is set at 0 0.070. The string is right on the line. It's not above it or below it. It's right on it. Dead center of the line. Okay, now we're going to check the frets. I'm going to go into squirrel mode. We're going to go through and check all the frets. I'll go out of squirrel mode if I find a bad fret. And right there, it's ever so slight, but there is a little bit of a rock there. And right there. So this fret right here on the bottom edge, it's just a fraction high on the B and the E. And 
right there. Just a little bit of rock. And right there. And ever so slight right there. So this fret, just three strings. And it's very, very little, but it is there. Okay, we got two spots. Just a little bit of clean up here and a little bit of clean up here. I'm going to say it's not going to affect the playing action or playing ability of the guitar because it's it's just barely there. Um, if you wanted the guitar perfect, it would take less than five minutes to clean that up. It's just barely there. I am pointing it out because it's present. That's how the guitar was sent to me. Okay, let's open up the electronics cavity and see what the electronics looks like underneath here. See how well the soldering is done. We're going to open up the electronics cavity. So mark CF. And it looks like the soldering is very well done. We have three wires right here that are soldered onto that pot. And this puddle was done all at the same time. And there's a nice sheen to that puddle. We have two going to this one, and again, a very nice sheen, nice bond. Same with here. Our soldering to the pot itself. Again, nice solder joints. You can see that they fed the wire through the hole and then soldered it. And this was definitely at temperature. That's what you want to see. You want to see that sheen. The switch itself, remember we had some jiggle. That is not the whole component moving. I'm going to jiggle the switch here. So that's actually in the switch itself. We've got it grounded right here. And they have twisted the wires together there to act as a shielding to cancel out some of the noise. That's nice to see. And they've done the same going to this pickup. Let's check out our jack. Let's kind of move the guitar around here. And four screws hold the jack in place. Let's see what we got. And again, the solder joints look nice. There's a nice sheen to those solder joints. 
I'm going to say that this one's got a little bit of pressure. It's okay. It is tight to the mounting plate. There's no movement. And they brought that nut down flush so there's not a lot of this barrel sticking out of the back plate. So they've adjusted this back nut and then gotten it tight to where it's not sticking out. Okay, let's uh, put it back together. Are we in the right spot? No, like that. Let's reattach her top. Okay, I have the guitar plugged into our multimeter. And our bridge pickup is reading 6.65. In the center position, both pickups, 3.145. And then our neck is reading 5.79. All right, we're going to check the radius of the neck. I have my 12 inch radius gauge. I'm going to stick it under the strings here and set it up. And the base of the neck is 12 inches. Now let's check our top. And at the top, it is fitting perfectly just like the base at 12 inches. So it is definitely a 12 inch radius at the top and the bottom. There is no compound. I have the Robertson strobe tuner now plugged into the guitar. And we're gonna check the intonation and our first fretted note as it was shipped to us. Let's start with our low E. That's open on the 12th. Open, 12th, and it's a little high, open, first fretted note, and that's high as well. There's our A, A on the 12th. Open, 12th, open, first fretted note, it's a little better, still high, there's our D, D on the 12th, That one seems to be a little high as well. Open. Twelfth. Yes, that one is high. 
open. First fretted note. A little high. There's our G. I'm going to tune that just a little bit. Twelfth. Open. Twelfth. Reading high as well. Open. First fretted note. Reading high as well. There's our B. A little bit of a tune. B on the 12th. Open. 12th. It's reading high as well. Open. First fretted note on the B. Reading high as well. There's our high E open. Twelfth. Just a fraction high. Open. First fretted note. And just a fraction high. So the majority of the notes are sharp. First fretted notes or majority of them are sharp as well. So that's telling us that we need to do a little work to the nut. And I'll also notice that when I'm tuning it, that they seem to get hung up on the nut a little bit. So the nut needs a little dressing. Now let's weigh the guitar and see how much the guitar actually weighs. All right, we have the guitar on the scale. We are reading grams. And it looks like it's fluctuating between 3,000 and 40 and 3,000. And 15 and pounds looks like we're going between six pounds ten ounces six pounds nine ounces so we'll just say six pounds ten ounces Okay, I now have the guitar plugged into my tube Blackstar amp. I have the EQ set all at 50%. The main volume is at 50% and the master volume is at 25%. We are using a little bit of reverb and I also have my NUX uh, analog delay plugged into the effects loop. Going to the bridge position Tones all the way up, volumes all the way up. position so we're going to roll the tone back a little bit about 20 25 percent back a little bit more.
go to our center position. I'm going to roll the tone back all the way up 100%. tone back about 20-25% center position tone back a little bit more. Go to our neck position and roll the tone all the way up. tone back about 20-25% in the neck position. Okay, I'm still on the 100% clean channel. We're going to go to our center position and just turn the tone back about 10 degrees. Exact same thing in the neck position.
Okay, I've taken my tuner out between the guitar and the amplifier and I've added my Ibanez Tube Screamer. All the settings on the amp are exactly the same. A little bit of reverb and we're still using the NUX on the effects loop for a little bit of analog delay. We are in the center position. I have the volume all the way up and the tone rolled back about 10 degrees. We're going to play the first section without the Tube Screamer. Now we're going to add the Tube Screamer, give it a little bit of crunch, a little gain. Okay, what are my final thoughts on the Harley Benton here? Let's go over the issues that we found with the guitar first. We found that the tone knob is just barely striking the plate here, and that was easily corrected. All I did was pull up on the knob, I put the tool under it, and lifted it just a little bit, and now the knob is completely smooth. The other issue we found, there's a slight blemish on the back of the guitar. You can't see it looking straight at it, but when you put the light directly on it, there is a line going crossways across the back of the body. And it is really non-noticeable unless the light hits it just right. After using the tuning keys, they all seem to work pretty well except the low E one. There seems to be a little bit of slop on it when you detune it to retune back up. It seems like it moves about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch before it re-engages and starts to you know tune up on the string. The nut on the G string needs a little bit of work. That string will pop back and forth and it's it's kind of hard to keep in tune. It's not the tuner, it is the nut. So what I was finding myself doing was bending the string up. It just needs a little bit of dressing. We did find that the intonation and the first fretted notes were all high. So it does need to be intonated and it does need a little bit of work done to the nut. All in all though, it's really not that bad. The fit and finish on the guitar is great. It's a beautiful seafoam green color. There's no errors in any of the routing. The neck pocket, everything looks really good on the guitar. The hardware looks nice. Everything functions as it should. It actually has a really nice sound as well. I'm not much of a, a telly player. It's not my style of music but I tried the best I could to show off what the guitar was capable of doing. It's definitely a nice guitar. The fretwork on the guitar is done very well. Even though it has conventional frets, don't let the whole ball in fret thing say, oh, I don't want that guitar, it doesn't have ball in frets. These frets are done very well. And the leveling on the neck is done very well. It's a nice guitar. Anyway, if you like detailed reviews like that, please tell me down in the description. Hit the like button, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. When I see the subscriber count go up, it makes me feel good. It lets me know that I'm doing the content that you guys want to see. Anyway, thank you for clicking on the video.